I read something, and tell me if this is true, that your first time on a film set was actually on a Max Ophel set. Exactly, that's true. It was Lola Montez. Mm. He was shooting mm. in Munich, and my parents were close to Max Ophel's. They know each other from Berlin, because my parents were actors in Berlin, and, and they know him. So we met him when he was shooting in a small town in Bamberg, um, in Germany, and uh, my father asked him if um, my uh, son, <laughs> who was at the time 18 years old, um, could watch the set uh, in Munich. And mm. he said, yeah, sure, why not? And then I came to the set in Munich, and they shot the circus scenes um, in Lola Montes. Wow. Um, and these were the most exciting scenes, and I watched them for two weeks, and uh, Christian Matras was a DP on it, and uh, I just followed him wherever he walked, and um, he didn't speak a word of German, and the, the gaffer uh, didn't speak a word of French, <laughs> but they could understand each other. And just watching the scene and all that was so exciting for me that um, I decided this is the job I want to want to do when I'm when I'm grown up. <laughs> Had you already thought that this was something that you were interested in when you appeared at that set? No, not really, because. Uh, I grew up in a theater. My my parents uh, had their own theater company, and we all lived together in a in a in a very old castle. That was uh, interesting because I grew up with a big family, not with just a small family, but with like ten, fifteen people <laughs> mm. around. And um, and then I started taking pictures, um, and I liked it very much. And my parents liked it too, and they bought me a nice Rolleiflex. So I went into re into photography, and then when I saw the movie set, for me it was like the united of uh, of taking pictures and theater, and so that was that was perfect for me. You know, whenever any any of us in life, whenever we happen upon the thing that we're most passionate about. I mean, it's a it's a big blessing because many people don't don't necessarily know what they're passionate about in life. But what was it about photography and cinematography that spoke to you and felt like a great fit for you? It spoke to me because the images were started moving, and that was so exciting for me that I could think of really um, taking moving images, and um, that was the biggest fascination of um, of this job to be able to uh, really capture a movement on stage or wherever um, with, with actors yeah and because I loved actors and uh, acting at one point I wanted to become an actor for sure but uh, fortunately <laughs> I never did it <laughs> and uh, so this was the big fascination yeah when how, how long was it until you started uh, collaborating with Mr. Fassbender? That took a couple of years. I started collaborating with him in the 70s, in uh, 1970. That hmm. was my first picture I did with him. That was a Western in Almeria in Spain, and the title was Whitey. Hmm. And it was in, in widescreen, uh, 235, and... Um, the interesting part was that um, he didn't like me at all because he wanted another DP, but this guy was not available. So when I came to Almeria, <laughs> because the producer, a friend of mine, Uli Lommel, recommended me, he was um, not very friendly to me. He mm. called me the, you are the DP fellow, <laughs> because <laughs> I worked on television a lot. You are the, the television guy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and... Um, and I thought this, this wouldn't last long. But then, you know, it lasted uh, nine it, years. Yeah, it lasted a while. <laughs> 16 films together. I understand that he could be very challenging to work with, his style of working. Oh, yes. It was very challenging. Uh, he was he was actually never a nice guy, so to speak. He was very um, demanding. Uh, he had great ideas, which I found out pretty fast that he had great ideas and I was it was for me it was fun to fulfill his visions and his ideas and uh, and it worked quite well so more and more 
I got acquainted to his attitude that he never said anything good about it. Uh, but okay, you know, I could live with that because I liked the work and I liked the acting and it, it was really, um, it was not fun to mm. work with him. But he was very good. He was excellent. He was the best in these in these years. And so I continued working with him. Was there? I mean, did the did the relationship uh, soften at all over the years? It did a little. Yes, it did a little because he learned that um, I was not not a bad, bad DP, and uh, so he hired me again after this first uh, adventure in Almeria, and uh, and and again and again, and um, so. And, you know, it was funny that um, he didn't like to come to a um, location to watch it before he started shooting there. So I and the, the production designer had to pick the location, and then he saw it on the first day when we started the scene. Hmm. So whenever he came uh, on the set, he said, okay, what do you think, how we should do it here? And I always had an idea how to do it, because when you pick a location for a scene, you have an you have an yeah, an idea how it would work. And he listened to that, and then he thought about a couple of minutes, and then he came up with a better idea. And that was interesting for me to find out that he always wanted to be better. <laughs> and so I learned from him a lot. So I got better with my, new, my next ideas. So we got better by working together. And by the end, we were pretty much in sync, I must say. It was mm -hmm. not so bad, but... It was still a lot of moments where he was unbearable. Mm. But I, I, I'm thinking of what you just said, and you're, you know, obviously you're thinking on your feet, then you're working fast, and I think that's pretty much uh, a great thing that you are known for in your work. That you, you're a very fast cameraman when you need to be. Right. Yeah. So that must have been essential. That that kind of pace. Yes, um, and that's what I really learned uh, working with him being fast and still not mad because mm -hmm. I was also very ambitious and uh, I was well prepared and I always trained my crew that they were fast and um, and then it really went well. So your, your first collaboration with Mr. Scorsese was After Hours, was it? Right. And that was a film that was shot very fast and it seems like a a special a special place in Scorsese's career. It felt almost like a like a refresher uh, for him because he had done some big movies and he wanted to get back and see how fast he could shoot something. Um, and I love that film. What, was, did that feel like a very special project? Yeah, it was very special, especially for one reason, because the first project that uh, he wanted to shoot with me was Last Temptation of Christ. Mm. And that was at that, that time uh, by Warner Brothers and it was, no, it was by Paramount, and um, it was a twenty million, twenty million dollar picture, and um, I met him um, at his birthday in L.A. and we talked a lot, and it was wonderful. And I was in heaven. I traveled to Israel and saw all these great sets and all that, and I always felt, oh my God, twenty million is a lot. And, and I went and shot a movie for <laughs> that much money before, so the biggest budget I had in Germany was like five million. And um, so I went back, and it was short before Christmas. And um, a couple, two weeks later, came the message that uh, that Paramount pulled the plug, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was falling from <laughs> from the sky to deep in a deep hole. But then it was luck, after all, because um, on after hours I could show him something that I was perfect in it because I was used to work fast and uh, always worked under very um, extreme conditions like little money and all that. So when <laughs> the producer asked him, asked Marty, Marty, do you have a shot list of 600 shots? What do you think you could do that? And he said, ask, ask Michael. And uh, <laughs> yeah, then I had a long talk with him and said, Marty, I looked at the list of your shots it's wonderful, I love every shot, but could you do 16 shots every night? And he said, okay, let's try, we can do it. 
and we did it in 40 nights for for four million dollars and um wow. it was for me the most wonderful experience i had because to give this wonderful and genius director the chance to get all what he wanted and still get it on time and then the movie was on top of it was successful and all um it was the start of my really my career in the states yeah just to for those that are unacquainted uh with with how film production works uh how rare is 16 setups a, a night i mean what is it usually on on any other production I mean, I can only compare it with the shots he did on the movie before where I worked with him. Um, I don't remember the title right now, but you know which one it was, right? Uh, it's, uh, Jerry Lewis and... Uh, uh, oh, yes, King of Comedy. King of Comedy. On King of Comedy, he shot like in daytime uh, with a great crew. Uh, he shot like four or five shots a day. Wow, wow. And this was all night shooting for after hours. All night shooting, wow. and yeah. So, do you, as a cinematographer, I would think you have to be very flexible. You could have a plan for how to shoot it, but being on the location, you you would have to change your your plan right on the fly. It's all about being flexible, right? You have to be flexible, but I was well prepared because we looked at all the locations before, and before it was night, because it was night. Um, um, I could look at every place. I took pictures. Uh, I, I also I, I taped it with my little uh, Sony camera, and um, so I, I knew ex exactly how to light it before we started. And sometimes I did a pre-light if it was time to do that. And so then it's possible if you are well prepared. You have a good crew, and I had a very good crew. Um, then it's possible. Mm. And if you have a director who follows that, and I will never forget <laughs> the, the time on our first night, um, um, I showed him the shot, and Marty looked at it and said, yeah, that's okay, and then he walked to his trailer, which is half a block away. By the time he arrived at his trailer, the AD came to him and said, uh, we are ready, Mr. Scorsese. So wow. he came back, <laughs> and I remember he never went back to his trailer. <laughs> 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 Well, I think about, I want to talk to you about a, a couple of these collaborations, but I think about the color of money, um, and I think about, and how cinematic you made those those pool halls. Were you excited by the environment of, of the pool hall when you, did it spark some creativity and some inspiration in you? Oh, yes, I was very excited. Um, and we shot the whole movie in Chicago, as you probably know, mm. and um, we tried to do something very special because... Um, I tried to have really the lens in the same height as the the, um, the, the balls were rolling, you know, on the field, on the green field. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it needed some, some special equipment for that. And so that was the trick. And then I moved with the balls on, on the green. And um, I think that made it very special. I think I've never seen that before yeah. in a pool movie. Absolutely, yeah. And um, and he gave me some really challenging <laughs> things to do, um, and it was sometimes not so easy to uh, think about it, how to get it. But um, yeah, with the help of my crew, <laughs> always got it. It was it's beautifully done. I, I wanted to ask you about working with Scorsese, something in particular, because uh, a few months ago we had the pleasure of talking to to Robert Richardson about his work with Mr. Scorsese. And he said that Scorsese, he, he he maps out all of his own shots. And it's just a question of you as a cameraman being able to achieve everything that he's wanting. It, do you, where do you feel kind of the personal creativity in that process? The personal creativity with Marty is that he is so well prepared normally. You know, he works on his script and on the shot list for like sometimes for like three months. And uh, when the shot list comes to me and I read it and and uh, look at the, at, you know, he makes little signs, this, you know, this shot is for this line in the script. And so then I have very good 
um, idea about the rhythm of a scene and the rhythm of the shots. And that is a great, great information to have. And so then, you know, I could really imagine every shot when I read his or read his uh, shot list, I could see the images in front of my fantasy, my head. And mm -hmm. uh, that was a great, great pleasure. It's very exacting. I mean, I, I, the the rhythm and the and the timing. It, right. I, I would think it would be very exacting. Yeah. But I I look at all these different films that you've done throughout your career. But just looking at the Scorsese films that you've done, I mean, they're so uh, diverse. I mean, you go from something like After Hours to A Goodfellas or An Age of Innocence. It really takes you in all these different directions. Um, but I would think among all of these that, that Last Temptation would have to have some kind of profound place in your life. That seems like a, a, a very profound project to be involved in. It was, because this was one of Marty's favorite projects uh, of all, and he tried so hard many years to really get it financed. And it came from a budget from $20 million at, at, at um, I don't know, I think it was Paramount, um, to a budget of nine million that friends of him really brought together, and we all worked for uh, very little money because it was work of love just for Marty to get his favorite project done, and it was it was just wonderful. Again, we had little money, and uh, we had not so much time, more time than after than after hours for sure, but it was still very tight. And, uh, but it was, every day was, um, with this, also with this project and uh, the wonderful actors we had, um, it was, sometimes it was that I felt we get some help from above, yeah. so to speak. <laughs> yeah, you can feel <laughs> it. Sometimes yeah. when a location that we found, like a river, that was great when we found it, um, and then it started raining a day, and the river was uh, like <laughs> was totally different. It was like um, like six feet higher than before, mm -hmm. and we had to find a new location, and it was a better one. And also for the last scene, the crucifixion, uh, we found a location, but it was in December, and it started snowing up there uh, because it was like closer in, into the mountains. And you know, you can imagine that you can't shoot a crucifixion scene with him hanging on the cross when it's so cold. So we looked at the location and looked and looked. And, and on the last day um, before we started, not before we started shooting, but before we, it had to be decided, we found the best and one, most wonderful location. And for me, it was always a miracle in a way. Yeah. And uh, I, I felt great about this, great about this movie. Were you... I mean, it's it's a gorgeous movie, and I think as the years have gone by, uh, definitely it's known as the classic that it deserves to be. But uh, upon its initial release, I mean, it was met with great protest. <laughs> I mean, was that yeah. was that very disheartening for you when that happened? It was not in a way because we kind of expected that, um, because we know from the reaction of the studio that there would be protests and there would be lines of people who were standing there and said, don't go to this movie, it's a, it's a disgrace and it's against, against Christ and against God and all that. And um, and you know that the book of Nikos Katsantzakis uh, was um, from from the church uh, on the on the list of no, no good, you, you are not allowed mm -hmm. to read it and things like that. So we expected that and that was it was very sad, but still. And again, it is. It is. Um, if you want to rent it, uh, most of the rental um, places where you can rent uh, DVDs don't have it because this, the church is still very much against it. That's that's that, amazing to that me. That is a shame, I think. I, I think so too, because it, it it it's one of the most devoutly spiritual movies that you can see. I mean. So, but thank goodness that the Criterion just released their Blu-ray of it, so yeah, it's yeah, available. It's such a gorgeous piece of work. Um, yeah. uh, I want I wanted to know from you um, about whenever you teach or whenever you choose to show <clears throat> students or groups 
particular scenes from your own work to illustrate a lesson, perhaps? Which, which ones do you go to and, and show them? Um, it's interesting that to mention that um, there is one scene in Goodfellas that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. It's the Copacabana shot, which is uh, this long shot, Sadikam shot, into the Copacabana that ends um, with, with her asking, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and um, for me, this is a scene where images can more do to a, a scene than words. Because imagine what could this guy have told her, what he has shown her with this wonderful shot. I mean, this is so much better <laughs> than anything words can tell you. And I think always when images tell you more than uh, than the words, then I think it's uh, that's a highlight of, of movie making. Mm -hmm. Well, and also it, I mean, it's an amazing shot. But beyond its kind of technical virtuosity, it really uh, deepens your emotional investment in in that scene. And I think that 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 has to be the definition of the the best camera work in filmmaking. So you all you you definitely show Goodfellas. Are there other scenes that you're particularly fond of? Yeah, I mean, one of my other favorite movies uh, for, for sure is. Uh, <clears throat> Um, I mean, one is Last Temptation that I'm showing sometimes because especially of the um, the religious aspect. Mm -hmm. And the other one um, is um, The Color of Money I like very much. And uh, and the other one is uh, um, sometimes I have a <laughs> 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 I don't remember my favorite movies. <laughs> Um, you mentioned already the wonderful uh, movie with uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and Oh, The Age of Innocence. Or uh, the Age of Innocence. Yes, Pfeiffer. and then you My did movie in that I remember. Then you did the fabulous Baker Boys with Michelle Pfeiffer as well, correct? Baker Boys, I love very much. Yes. Oh yeah. That was a very special story. Yeah. When I'm when I'm thinking about, I mean, I'm thinking about Michelle Pfeiffer's red dress and fabulous Baker Boys, or the great costumes and something like The Age of Innocence. I would think that your collaboration with the costume designer would have to be important to you as well. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And also the collaboration with the production designer. Mm -hmm. Especially when you work with so great uh, production designers like Dante Ferretti. Uh, this, is, this is... I was so... Um, how to say... I was so happy that I could talk and work with all these great personalities, great actors, great production designers, costume designers, all that. It was a blessing, really. It was a blessing. Yeah. Well, in terms of your, the, the main collaboration <clears throat> with the actor is, of course, the director. But where, where do you come in with your communication with the actor? Um, I mentioned that I was um, grow up in a theater company, mm -hmm. so um, I had great respect for this for the job of an actor. And um, when you have so much respect for that, then you also behave like a person that is very concentrated, very quiet. And I trained my crew that you know, once the moment the actors are on the set, there is no movement, there is no noise anymore. And the actors feel that. And when an actor feels that he is loved and that he is respected, he can open his soul to to, to a story and to the camera. And that was always that was was a, was really very very important. And out of this respect and this love for actors, there did some wonderful relationship to actors developed from that. So it was just uh, it was pleasure. <laughs> do, do you find that? the best actors know exactly where the camera is and what they're playing to, or is that irrelevant? In a way, it is irrelevant. Um, I can give you two, exec two examples that are very clear to me. When we shot um, Gangs of New York, we had uh, Daniel DeLuis, who is one of the most wonderful actors uh, mm -hmm. I've worked with, and he is an actor. You can put the camera wherever you want. He plays for the world. He plays for, for every 
angle. Um, and on the other hand, um, somebody like um, DiCaprio. The, DiCaprio. DiCaprio is uh, an actor. I'm, I'm French with him, by the way. <laughs> um, he is um, an actor. You can tell. Listen, when you before you say your line, you are in the dark. And before you say your line, well, why are you saying you just do one step forward and you step into the light? And he can do it. And, I mean, on the point exactly. And he knows always. Um, he always knows where the camera is, and he knows where the audience are. Mm -hmm. And that is wonderful too. But I cannot. I wouldn't say that this is the best way to do it. It's just one actor does it this way, and another does it another way. Yeah. And these are two extreme um, actors, but they both uh, belong to the best that there are. Oh, they absolutely do. Is there, I mean, because you, in essence, you are an assistant storyteller, so you would have yes. to feel passionate about whatever story that you're telling. Have you ever run into a problem where you you don't feel as passionate about the story? Yes. Um, it was... Not easy to shoot a movie like Goodfellas, I must say. I know that it was a good story because it told the story of a guy who runs into a mafia when he was a young kid and he ends up uh, like in disaster. Um, and, you know, we killed so many people and I'm very much against violence. And mm -hmm. to do this movie was hard, but it was with Marty. And it was a great story, but I must say, with another director than Marty, I probably wouldn't have done it because of the reason that I, I hate uh, violence. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to ask you about one more movie in particular, and then and then just a quick closing question. You've been so nice with me with your time, so thank you. Uh, but this project fascinates me uh, with with Coppola's Dracula. Uh, because that seemed like an extremely experimental project. Yes. Um, what, what were the biggest challenges and, and freedoms associated with, with working on that film for you? Um, it was wonderful to meet Francis, uh, and uh, I was a big fan of his movies, for sure, like everybody else in the world. Um, and... Um, he had um, one issue that uh, the reason was why he hired me, that the studio said, uh, listen, uh, Francis, you always go like 10 million over budget. On the next movie, it's the 10 million come out of your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so he had to look for a DP, was a little faster, <laughs> a little cheaper than <laughs> the, one he, the one he worked with before. So and then we were really well prepared. We had 10 weeks of prep, and every morning I went to his office, and he uh, told me what he wants to do with the scene. And um, I went to my office and made a little shot list. Then I came back to him. He looked at it and said, yeah, it's okay. A little changes here and there. We did this for 10 weeks, and after 10 weeks, every shot was uh, on. We had a storyboarded every every shot. Wow. And when it was ready, it was a very thick <laughs> book. And when we started, he t told everybody, this is like, um, how do you call it, music? You, you, this is the partitur, <laughs> in, in German. This is, um, mm. this is well, so it's, every it's, shot that's not in here, we don't do. Right, yeah? so, right. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's. It's a stunning, it's a stunning movie, uh, yeah, what you is. guys accomplish in that. Yeah. Um, you know, there's so much to talk to you about. I, I just, I want to tell you that I've always loved your work with Mr. Redford as well, and and the film Guilty by Suspicion. Those are particular favorites of mine. Yeah. Uh, but when you look at the the, the work of today, um, is there anything that troubles you? And and conversely, what are you impressed with? There are still movies that impress me, um, I must say, and um, and I love to go to the movies. Um, and uh, what I did, I, I gave my job in the States, I gave it up six years ago, uh, but then there was a project in Germany uh, that was very fascinating, 
because it was basically shot in a room. It was a story of a girl of 10 years was kidnapped. Mm. Um, and uh, she was uh, in, in that uh, prison, in a way, for eight years. And the relationship between uh, her and the guy who kidnapped her was quite interesting because he didn't want money or he didn't want to rape her. He wanted to educate his, educate his wife. And that was a very strange story about this relationship with the, these two people. And the, the bunker or the prison that she was in was four square meters. Wow. And uh, so to shoot a movie in four square meters can imagine the problems. And I said, okay, this is a challenge. And it happened that my wife was a director of that. So it was, <laughs> <laughs> I decided, okay. I'm trying to do that again, and I did it, and it was it was wonderful for me to do that after six years. I haven't worked. This was the last one I really did. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is the last one you're saying? Yeah, this is the last one, definitely. So you, uh, I mean, ha- do you just feel li- like it's time to re- retire, or? I never really retire because I'm teaching, as you know, mm-hmm. and um, I'm doing something for the environment. I shot little shorts for educate the people to to be more careful with energy and uh, and things like that and you know take a ride with a bike instead of taking your car that mm-hmm. needs gas and all that so i'm still very busy and uh, i have very much fun with it well i i have to tell you as a movie lover your work has made a great difference in my life and and thank you so thank much you so for much. Thank you for enriching my life, and thank you for giving me time today. This has been wonderful. Yeah, it was wonderful for me, too. (laughs) Okay. Have a good day, sir. Thank you.